What is up, everybody? Welcome to Dope and Dharma, the Dharma Time Edition. As always, I am the Dharma Guy, and with me here is the Dope Doctor. <coughs> oh, just in time for the cough. Look at that. Yep, just Perfect in time, time with the cough and the water, man. Get there you go, soul. man. There you go. Um, and so, anyways, so if you guys are watching this live, you were checking this out on Facebook.com slash WPSN99. If you were mm-hmm. listening to this, hopefully you're listening to via one of the podcast platforms that we're on. Of which include iTunes, Spotify, I don't know, there's a bunch of them. Whatever your favorite podcasting platform is, we're most likely on there under Dharma Time. And if we're not, reach out and we'll see if we can get on there. Um, and then uh, if you want to see us, if you want to see the edited versions and whatnot later on, if you want to share it with your friends, which I encourage, you can go to youtube.com slash Dharma Time and you can see the older uh, shows there. If you want to catch up on, for instance, this particular uh, series that we're doing on communication today, which is number five, by the way. This is our last one for communication. Pretty excited about it. Um, but anyways, before we get to that, uh, as always, if you look above his head, you can reach out to us. If you or a loved one is struggling with the disease of addiction, you don't know what to do, you don't know who to call, you're lost, you're worried, you're you're upset, reach out to us at 833-NOW-MATTERS. That's 833-NOW-MATTERS. Or you can go to nowmattersmore.org and you can uh, check out who we are. You can fill out the application button if you or a loved one needs help. Uh, or you can always uh, um, hit that donate button because we like that too. Speaking of donations, I'd also like to send a, a thank you to everybody who is attending or is sponsoring our golf tournament, which is coming up, uh, I think it's next week, on the 12th. Uh, Monday at 12 o'clock, we'll be at Reunion Golf uh, Golf Course doing our tournament, and uh, pretty excited about that. Got a lot of people showing up this time. We actually had to turn people away, which was, uh, which was cool. Um, that means we're the hottest ticket in town, I guess. Uh, but anyways, I digress, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing? You got me all distracted. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and uh, uh, for those of you who pay attention to uh, our social media as well and, and watch us, uh, know that we do a show called The Couch Live on Fridays. And then uh, we actually started, we added to that uh, uh, by doing uh, The Couch Live locally on Terrestrial Radio on uh, on Mondays. So Mondays from 8 to 9 if you're local, you could tune into uh, WOKB 1680 AM on your dial. Um, or you can check us out on the WOKB Facebook page because I think they also do a simulcast on Facebook as well. So uh, if you're local, by all means, check that out. And that one's a call-in show. So by all means, if you want to call in and talk about what we're talking about or offer some input, then we would love to hear from you. So anyways, let's get started, man. Uh all right, so we did a five-part communication series, right? So five weeks ago, we were talking, and, and we realized that how humans communicate with one another um, is a very complex thing, and, it, and it's uh, um, further you know, uh, made difficult by all the different platforms that we have, right? We have so many different yeah. platforms and so many ways to communicate. And then the problem with those ways is each one has its own separate set of, like, written and unwritten rules, right? Nuances and, and expectations and perspectives. And it can be quite the minefield if you don't know how to navigate mm-hmm. skillfully. And in doing so, sometimes you could really mess up yours or somebody else's inner peace through your lack of knowledge, right? Through your ignorance on how it's how it's done. And so we yep. decided to go ahead and touch on some of those. We were originally going to do a one show, uh, but we realized it was just way too big of a topic. So we decided to break it up. And we've gotten some pretty good feedback. People like the series, so we, we stayed with it. Uh, the first one of which was uh, texting. So by all means, you can go to youtube.com slash Dharma Time and you can catch all those old ones. But we covered texting, like the do's and don'ts, the expectations, that kind of stuff. The second show was on emailing. We talked about uh, you know what is good or what's appropriate and inappropriate when you're emailing another person, either business, professional, whatever. Third show was uh, phone calls, like if you're going to get on the phone with somebody, uh, how to use Hello. it, how, you know, what's too late to call. Uh, and then last week we did a, a rather long show, actually, on in-person meetings. It was almost a two-hour show, man. Um, but it's such a complex topic, right? Yeah, the in-person meeting, it's it's I personally think it's one of the most important ones, and I think that's also why it was such a long show. Um, so today, though, today is equally important, I think, in today's world. Um, so today's show is about social media. Yes, I said it. The big S word, right? Social media. That is, uh, yeah. gosh, man. Like, I, I don't know about you. I got like a love-hate relationship with social media. It is. It right. is such. It's such a massive component of everybody's life, but it also is the the source of so much 
frustration and anger and disdain and distractions in so many people's lives. It really is the epitome yeah. of a double-edged sword, right? On one hand, it helps connectivity and business and, 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 and families and all this stuff. But on the other hand, it can destroy things if you let it. And it's a very fine yeah. line, I think. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're talking about with social media, man. So uh, you got anything to say mm-hmm. right off the bat before we get started on the list? Yeah, off the bat, I must not be doing the things that get people frustrated on social media because it doesn't frustrate me at all. Um, I don't, I don't scroll. Uh, and if I do, it'll, it'll take me five little swipes and then I'm done. Um, <laughs> so it's not, I'm trying to ignore you guys. If you post something, it's just, if, if, uh, Zuckerberg doesn't put it in the first five swipes, I'm not seeing it. Right. Um, I don't, you know, uh, spend a lot of time. I mean, I, I post, people think I spend a lot of time on it cause I post, but I post because we're, we do things that are public. Right. You know what I mean? That's really the only reason. And plus, I, I also like my family to see certain things. Like, to me, I found it a good way to share family photos, yeah. stuff like that. I love I love seeing that, it, that it's your guys' birthday. So if you have a birthday and, um, and I happen to go on, it's usually every three days that I'll look or four days. Sometimes I miss. So I miss some of your birthdays. But I'll catch up and I'll say happy belated birthday. I like it for all those things. Um. If there's a love-hate relationship, I would say what I don't like about it is how opinionated uh, the owners of all these social media monsters are. And therefore, their opinions matter to the influence to so many millions of us that do spend more time on social media. So that's the hate part. Uh, yeah, for me, I think the hate part really is is the uh, how it's utilized by some people, right? Sometimes it's utilized for hatred. Sometimes it's utilized for divisive speech and rhetoric. Um, right. So, uh, you, you know what? And as I'm talking, Simon made a very awesome comment. It says, have you noted the initials social media, S&M, are appropriate, sadistic, and uh, uh, masochistic, back and forth, That's when fun. continuous or anonymous comments? I agree 100%. It is a love-hate relationship, I think. I love it because, yeah. for me personally, it is a tool. It's allowed me to expand my reach and, and, and be in more mm-hmm. more people's you know phones and living rooms at the moment to get our message across. Um, it's allowed me to keep track of friends and family and what they're doing. You know, even if I'm not on the phone with them, I can still check out like, oh hey, my friend got a new job or something. You know, um, yeah. Like I said, the hate part I think is number one. I do I don't like that it's time consuming, right? Because you can kind of fall into a rabbit hole if you're not careful. Uh, not necessarily me, but my kids and stuff. Like they, you know, they go to look mm-hmm. at one thing. Two, three hours later, they're still scrolling, so it can be time-consuming. Um, and, and the other thing I think, like I said, I hate is just the divisiveness, you know, that can happen there. Um, but, you know, that's with life, right? Uh, so, anyway, so let's, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's, uh, we're, I'm going to try my best to not make this a two-hour marathon show today. So let's. Oh, we were started. Yeah, well, I'm going to start going down the list, right? So, once again, as okay. with our other shows, these are just things that him and I kind of ch- jotted down or jotted down. Uh, they're not necessarily in any particular order. Of importance, we're just right at the top of the dome. So the first thing I have listed here is pics. So pictures. Um, I, I don't. All I put was pics. So I don't know where our mind was going, but I know where it is now. And so I'll say when I think of pics on social media, the first thing I think of is don't post anything that you don't want everybody to. See. <laughs> it's the first thing, and not necessarily even like risque or or non PG stuff. But if you have a picture that you don't look good in, that you don't like it, or if you have a picture of somebody doing something they shouldn't be doing, mm-hmm. don't post it. Because that once it's online, it never goes away. And even if you take it down, it doesn't matter. Some it's it's somewhere in the cloud forever. Um, so you just gotta be very careful. You gotta be mindful. Like I'm very mindful of when I post a picture on social media. I'm a relatively private person. Um, you might not think that by looking at my social media, but that tells you how private I am. Because if you think you know me in my life based upon social media, I assure you you do not. There are so many things that go on in my day to day life that I just never share publicly. Um, the things I put on publicly to me fit within the persona of what I put out there on social media, you know, things that, that show the, the work that we're doing in the philanthropic sense, um, the things that show the activities that we're involved, all to basically bring attention to the cause that we're fighting for. Right. Um, my day to day, like struggles, my, you know, the things that the, some of my little victories in life, you know, I don't post all those. Um, and, and there's a reason for that because it's just, as far as I'm concerned, um, if you need to know, you know. I don't need to put certain things out for the world. I'm still a relatively private individual. And so I'm very mindful of the pictures that I post. I'm also very mindful of the pictures I post of other people. 
because I've figured yeah. out that not everybody wants to be tagged in things, or which we'll cover in a minute. Not everybody wants their face out there. Like a lot of people, you know, want their good side or something. If, so if you snap the shot of somebody like, you know, half eaten, you know, a cheeseburger, and they look over at you, you know, that's not everybody is okay with that particular picture being posted. So I try to respect that for others. Um, I don't know if I necessarily care as much, but I try to respect the fact that other people do. Right. Um, so that's my gist on pics, man. It's just essentially being mindful of what pictures you're going to put up. Because the other thing too is, and I don't know if we have a list on here or not, but might as well cover it. Um, I'm also very mindful of some of the people that I'm friends with on Facebook. And I look at the pictures that they're putting. And what I will say is everybody should understand that when you post a picture, nobody sees your intent. Nobody sees your personality. Nobody sees what your thoughts were or what you want to explain. All they see is a picture and that picture is, is left open to interpretation. And that interpretation might not always uh, coincide with what your intent was and what you were thinking. So for instance, I see a lot of women posting like scantily clad pictures of themselves, not necessarily like X rated or anything like that, but just pictures that are very highly suggestive and, and those will sometimes be the same women who will complain that men are sending them, pictures that they don't want or hitting on them and things of that nature. And not that I'm trying to justify anybody's behavior. However, I'm not shocked, right? Like I'm not shocked that the person who posts very conservative pictures gets fewer unwanted attention than the person who's posting pictures with their cleavage out or their butts out and things of that nature, because whether you intend to or not, or whether you agree with it or not to many people, you are putting an image out there that says, I'm okay with this. Um, and, and we could argue all day long whether you should be able to or not, but that's not up for debate at the moment. What is, is, and what should be are, are two different things. So what are your thoughts on pictures? Well, first of all, I think um, people may not know your intent, but they'll judge your intent. Yep. Um, so I think you need to be mindful of that. I think that uh, if you post a certain picture where you're dressed a certain way, uh, maybe you're either in denial or you... Uh, truly, legitimately, don't view that as as an issue. But your opinion is your opinion, and there's a lot of other people out there with differing uh, different opinions, and so they may judge your intent. They may think that you're trying to to be something that you're not. Um, you know what, what? What this reminds me of is uh, there's people out there that hate on other people for only posting good things, positive things. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I never really understood that. I, I've never really understood why people take issue with other people that post only positive moments of their life and say, oh, that's a fake because, you know, I'm real. I post my, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it's like, yeah, but it's almost like airing your dirty laundry. And not everybody, I don't, I don't I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sold on that anyone should do that. Um, I agree. So I, I really don't know. I don't know the right or wrong on that. What I'm, I don't what think I'm there is a right though, or wrong. I, I, yeah, I don't think so either. But, but I, I, I am bothered by people that judge other people's desires of what to post. You know what I mean? In other words, if they say, ah, oh, you know, they only post everything and that's all fake. You know, they took a picture yeah. next to a car. They don't even own that car. So what? Yeah. So what? You know what I mean? I mean, they know you know that that's not their car. Uh, <laughs> you and I may know that that's not their car, but we're not their audience. That they're, they're showing it to and who cares? You know, well, I you guess know I'm just not really that that concerned about how real or unreal it is because what i do like about the social media pics are the family pics i do right. like when people take pictures with their family because you get to you get to see a little bit of 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 other side of people yeah. um for instance i think that's how people know my wife dana and my kids dalia and zoe um they may not know them uh without those pics you know well, they, family they show up to all the events too though well, yeah a but not everybody goes to those events involved. No, no, yeah. they don't. Yeah, you know what I mean. But but I think it's kind of cool. I I like showing them off because that's what I live for. Yeah. So cool. I, I I love showing my wife. I like showing my kids. Yeah. You know my um, parents. Well, that that leads me to. There's another one on here. I skipped down a few because it, it kind of coincides with what we were just talking about, mm -hmm. and that is image. Um, there is you know a, a lot of people will present an image on their their profile, and and sometimes that yeah. image is factual. And sometimes it's not. I'm not going to say truthful because everybody has their own truth, obviously. But sometimes it's factual and sometimes it's not. And so, in other words, 
and I guess what I'm referring to is is that where somebody will post a picture of like I, I saw a documentary recently where there's people out there who would take a picture of a jet, you know, a, a view outside of a jet, and and take a toilet seat and put it next to them and get the picture taken so it looks like they're on a flight going somewhere, you know, and they're presenting an image, right? And, and there's a lot of these influencers who were faking their popularity to, you know, further their brand and things of that nature, right? And, and right. on one hand, I, I understand the concept of, hey, you know, that's fake, you're promoting, you know, something right, that's not right. true or whatever. I, I get it. Um, but on the other hand, hey, man, if that's how you choose to make a living and it's working, who am I, you know, to, to tell you? I mean, it's 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 another cog in the wheel of the machine, right? I mean, that's how the machine works. As, as long as there's yeah. somebody willing to put their stuff out there, there's going to be somebody else out there willing to follow them and like their stuff. So I, I can't, yeah. you know, we do the same thing in movies, right? Like, uh, movies are all make-believe, you know? Rambo Everything didn't actually it. exist. <laughs> so Even reality TV is make-believe. Yeah, so we're paying money to go out and be entertained. So social media, to me, is just another form of entertainment. So, you know, if you're out there pretending to be something you're not and you're creating this image, um, you, you know, far be it for me to tell you not to, you know. Um, having Here's... said that, well, well, just real quick, I'll let me finish. My point is... I think the thing is, is be very aware, right? I think, first of all, this entire series that we're doing, mindfulness just keeps popping up. Be mindful, right? And so what I will say is about image. Once again, be mindful. Everything that you post, even if it's a picture, if it's a word, if it's a phrase, if you share something, be mindful that what you're doing is you're cultivating an image, right? You're presenting an image of who you are, whether you intend for that or not. It doesn't matter. As he said, other people are going to look at it and judge. And so right. just be aware that everything you put is creating an overall image of what people who are just going to glance at your page are going to think of you. And and that could not matter to you. I don't know. But I will say if you're of the younger generation, it should matter because uh, employers are looking at those and they're deciding if you're hireable or not oftentimes based upon the image that they're seeing. Um, friends, family members, potential love interests. You know, that's all part of it, man. And so you just got to be aware. You know, if, if you're uh, uh, trying to present yourself a certain way, just make sure that image holds up, you know, consistently. So, uh, go ahead. Oh, I remember. <laughs> no, but I, you should, I you really don't. The dairy thing. No, no, the, the, the finger on my nose wouldn't help me remember. I should have wrote it down. <laughs> You'd be like, why am I holding my finger on my nose? Yeah, um, exactly. What, uh, I so I'm a... image, well, what I would say about image, though, is, you know, so you, everyone does it anyway. Um, I mean, when you're when you're at home and you leave your house, you only leave your house a certain way. Now, if you're one of these people that leave your house, uh, however you woke up, that's on you. But but maybe that's your image, and maybe that's what you want people to know right. as well. That is an image. So it reminds me of uh, back in the '80s, we had those kids, the, the gothic kids, right? And they'd be like so <laughs> anti-mall, right? They were like, yeah. you know, I'd never shop at the mall. You know, I don't buy my clothes at the mall. You yeah. know, at the Gap, they would make fun of things like the Gap because yeah. Gap was brand new yeah, back then. I remember that, right? And they'd be like, "But you do realize that there's kids that look like you in every city, in every yeah. town, and they look exactly like you, yeah. like, and they you. all go to the they vintage. They exactly you know, what you say. Yeah. They listen to the exact same music that you do. So you are part of an image and something. You just, you're just yeah. not part of one that's more acceptable to other people. That's your yeah. choice. You know, for yeah. whatever reason." You know, but every single person on this planet fits into a mold of an image of some group of people. And so for anyone out there to judge other people's image of being whatever they want to say it is, uh, that sounds more like jealousy and it sounds more like hurt feelings and it sounds more like unresolved personal issues rather than uh, truth. Yeah, no, I agree. Um so the next one, uh, I'm, I'm looking through the list here, and so I'm going to try to combine a lot of these because I know a lot of them are very similar. So the next uh, next grouping that I'm going to put, I'm going to read off some of the tags on them, uh, was humor and uh, commenting on somebody else's page and taking too seriously, right? Because I think they're all intertwined. <laughs> so, so humor, and you, you see where I'm going. So humor, yeah. commenting on right. somebody else's page, and taking too seriously. I'm going to put all those together in the nah. sense of very often – I will see something on Facebook and I will look at it and, and I, I'm a voyeur at heart, man. So depending on what it is, the first thing I'll do is, Ooh, let me see what the comments are. Cause I, I'm sure it's going to ruffle some feathers and I'm just interested to see what the debate is. So I will click and, 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 and very often what I will see 
is whatever it was was meant to be humorous. And then in the comments, subsequently, you'll see a ton of people who who are what I would view taking it way too seriously. Um, mm. And then they're commenting. And what I will see oftentimes is two people that are not the poster are arguing and fighting in the comments <laughs> below. Um, it, it happened to me, as a matter of fact. A buddy of mine posted a picture about, um, I don't even remember what it was now. Uh, oh, gosh. I don't remember what it was. It was, it was a racial Wasn't thing. it a blackface thing? Yeah, it was a racial thing. My buddy, he's a black dude. He put up something about um, stop saying you're being white or something like that. And he was the, the sentiment was he feels that sometimes people will say acting intelligently or speaking properly, whatever, is considered a white trait, and it's not, right? And so I made a joke because I've known this dude for over 20 years. And I yeah. said, oh, what if they're wearing white face? And I put a picture of white chicks, the movie, where those two guys were dressed up as white girls. I says, oh, what if they're doing this? And I was being funny. He got it. He laughed. He laughed. He thought it was hilarious. Yeah. However, there's these other two people that I also went to school with and I've known about as long. I'm not as friendly with them, uh, but I know them. I know of them. Clearly. <laughs> they decided that the, they were going to use that as to say that I'm not woke enough and that I'm racist and that I'm just whole litany of problems, all because I made a joke to my friend of over 20 years publicly. Um, now yeah. we could argue if I should or have or shouldn't have. Uh, that's not something I'm not I'm not concerned with. I don't think it's going to affect me uh -huh. in any way. But I do think there are people out there that might get affected by that, which is why we're having this discussion. But mm. that's an example of humor. We already did a show a couple of weeks back on humor about what is or isn't funny and judging that. Um, so I put something funny. Him and I f found it funny. He's the original poster. But these people decided to take it upon themselves to have either a gotcha moment or a, a teachable moment. Maybe they thought. Um, and then the problem is, just understand, first of all, humor, we've already done a show, like I said, it, it could be, mm. it, I can't tell somebody else what to find funny. And people find things funny for various different reasons. Humor is a wonderful thing, and I think it should be used. The, the commenting on somebody else's page, understand that, that I personally have never witnessed a situation where people are heated, and somebody tells the other person that they're wrong and all the reasons why, and then the other person is receptive to that. I've never heard anybody say, well, you're horrible and stupid. You should have done that. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. I never thought. You know what? You're right. Never. Never. You're not going to change yeah. that person's opinion, right? And so the only thing to me, I don't know why, but I feel embarrassed for those people when I see them going back and forth. Because for me, it's an awkward moment. If I put a post, because I've had it happen the other way, where I posted something, and in the comments, two people I know that don't know each other are arguing and fighting. And I'm watching this happen. I'm like, dude, I, hey, guys, it's awkward because I feel like I should intervene because it's in my space. But they're adults. And so it's like it's a weird kind of thing. And so. Oh, I'll let I it think, happen. Oh, yeah, I, I usually do let it happen. <laughs> I said I felt like I should stop it. I didn't say I stopped it. They're grown, man. They're adults. But my point is when you're commenting on somebody else's page, you just understand that it's a public forum, man. So you have every right, right to say what you want. But they also have every right to say what they want. They have every right yeah. to disagree with you. They have every right to ignore you. So just understand, you know, you choose to participate or not. It's very easy to see a comment, and as my daughter would say, let it go. Like, it's very easy. You don't have to respond. Matter of fact, that situation that I'm referring to, they continued for quite some time, and I just, I, you know, I moved on with my day. I don't even know what the other comments were. I didn't even read them. I don't even care. It doesn't bother me. Um, and they might feel that they got their point across. Who knows? Don't care. Um, but my point is, is, is being aware, and, and the final sentiment on that three grouping there, don't take it too seriously. It's Facebook, guys. You know, it's it's Instagram. It's whatever. It's social media. It's not real life. It's not somebody sitting in front of you. You know, it's taking it so seriously is going to do nothing but affect your inner peace and how you interact with those around you. Go for it, man. Once again, just to remind you, in case you forgot, because I know you're old here, <laughs> you got commenting on somebody else's page, taking it too seriously, and uh, where's the other one? Oh, and humor. Those are the three that we grouped together for this one. All right. So, uh, first of all, commenting on, on someone else's page, uh, just be aware that if you're not going to do it privately, that it is subject to scrutiny. I mean, you may have a personal relationship with that person. That's cool. And, and, and I think that uh, when I... I don't tend to do read other the, the other comments. Uh, hopefully, you didn't implant something in my head that I start doing. Um, it's, it's entertaining. I'll give you that. But we'll see. Uh, I, I might um, because I'm thinking. You know, they're saying they have a relationship with that person, so their com their comment is probably just like my comment. Now, I'm I, I make a comment based on what I read or what I saw, 
between my relationship and that person. I almost act like none of these other people are in here. Yeah. So I don't really care what they got to say or their interaction. They have their own relationship with this person, just like I do. Um, but I am aware that by posting it, that there may be some, some additional comments. Uh, luckily, I haven't gotten in, in a situation like you've been, but it's not because I haven't accidentally said something that it could have been. And, and I go, it makes me think of the time where you did something about your father. You posted something about your father. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I did a jab about just him being a crappy father or something like that or or uh something about you not knowing who he is or whatever yeah yeah even after posting that and after i hit that sin i thought there's gonna be somebody that doesn't know that you talk openly about that and that yeah. we joke about that that they're probably gonna say you know what a jerk move you know how dare you talk about his father you know what i mean oh i, really I legit thought- had that no i had that with a with a long lost relative a relative that I haven't spoken to for, gosh, I don't even know how long. I posted one of my little things with my arm around space, and he just hanging on my dad for father. Oh, that's day. right. That's right. And then, and then she, I haven't spoken to her in like 20 plus years at that point, you know, and know nothing. She decided to chime in and just like blast me. And I kept telling her, I was like, dude, I don't think a public forum is the right place for us to have this discussion. And she kept pushing. And so finally I had to kind of let her know my true thoughts, and she didn't like that very much. Um, yeah, so come that, to think yeah. of it, you Get, you you do get in quite a bit of trouble on the, on on the social media now that I think I'm outspoken, oh, man. Yeah, you got I'm all outspoken. kinds. Of, you got more stories than I got. Uh, I know. Um, and then the other thing is um, the wait, wait go through the the list again. Ah, <laughs> see, I knew you'd forget. <laughs> you got humor. What is or isn't funny? Commenting on somebody else's page and taking it too serious. Yeah, as uh, as far as uh, taking it too serious, I don't understand why anyone out there takes anything that you view out there too serious it's just not that big deal it really isn't um if you don't like something i post you know i i apologize for you actually you don't have to defriend me you you know i i say really dumb things sometimes i i say things really ridiculous sometimes but i can assure you that what i post and i say is a lot less than what i'm thinking I can assure you, it did go through an editing process, and for some reason, it passed. For some yeah. reason, it got through the filter, and I do have a filter. I know it doesn't yeah. appear that I have a filter. <laughs> yeah. And maybe younger, I didn't have any filter. But somehow, what I thought or said or posted went through some form of filter. The only people I've gotten in trouble with for posting anything are my daughters, and and my 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 you know my my daughters and my wife. Well, your wife my, doesn't have social media, so that helps. No, but the daughters will tell her. <laughs> <You know? laughs> They're little narcs, man. That's not yeah, cool. little narcs. So they'll be like, why did you post that picture? Like, and they'll be like, what do you mean? You look great in that picture. No, I don't. And like, They don't always like the same thing that I like as far as what I see. So <laughs> Simon I've says learned like a that I have filter. to ask for permission, which I don't do, but I should. <laughs> yeah. You know to, to post it, and then like with my family, that you know, like the ten Delgados, the exp- the expanded family, they'll be like, "Oh, watch Louie, he might post it." It's like, brother, what are you talking about, man? Look, if I post it, you look good in it. I can assure you, I'm not gonna post you when your mouth is like that. You know what I mean? You know, with your face <laughs> is sideways. But that's not true of them, though. My daughters, my family members, they'll post a picture where they look real good, and I'm like making some funny face. So the same people they criticize don't follow the same rules. So that's my comment to the world sure. is that you have a lot of things to say when it comes to what other people post, what other people say, what their opinions. But, man, none of us are in glass houses, man. And huh. look at yourself. You don't. Do, you look at your if you're in a picture of a group, you know, darn well, you're paying more attention to how you look in that group pic yeah. than anyone else in that group pic. But I can assure you, I do look at every single person in there and make sure that I'm not offending, you know, anyone in there. And if I am, I just don't post. There's a lot of family pictures I won't post because right. there's at least one person in there with eyes closed or whatever, and it might get upset. <laughs> um, before we move on to the next topic, let me address some of the comments. Uh, Richard Coleman said people take things so seriously on social media because people are overly protective of their, in air quotes, virtual reputations. I agree. We kind of right. covered that earlier. Yep. Uh, and then uh, Tina Wines. I actually haven't seen her comment, so welcome to the show. I don't see anybody's uh, comments. 
Um, she said, people argue so much on Facebook about politics. I tend to read the argumentative posts, but I never join in on the argument. I agree. I said it earlier in the show, I am guilty of getting my popcorn out and watching some of the comments because they are quite entertaining at times. <laughs> yeah. um, so let me move on to the next one I have on the list. Once again, the list that we're going through, none of it is uh, uh, you know, based upon value. We just jotted things down. Um, yeah. and, and we're trying to talk about how we can skillfully handle this stuff to bring a little bit more inner peace to ourselves. So uh, the next one I have here is unfriending, and I'm going to include the next one is blocking. So blocking and unfri- unfriending. Um, let me say that um, it makes no sense to me. Uh, the only people I block are are uh, the the fake accounts, you know, the ones that will randomly yeah. tag me in some like <laughs> pornographic thing or something. Right, or some, right. Those are the ones I block. I don't want anything to do with that. Um, but if somebody's you know, disagrees with me or, or mean to me or hurts my feelings or something. Uh, I, I don't really care. I just, I, I let it ride. Um, you know, maybe they had a bad day. Maybe they truly don't like me. I, I don't know. Maybe they'll come around at some point. I don't know. I don't really right. care. It's Facebook. Yeah. Um, but, um, I, I think I, I'm sure I've been unfriended before. I'm sure I have or blocked. I, I don't even know. They don't send you like a notification, but it feels very, uh, <laughs> unnecessary. They should. They should. They should send yeah. you a a notification yeah. says you've been blocked. You know, Trinity just blocked you. Yeah, it, it feels weird to to unfriend or block somebody on a Facebook thing because uh, it, it's it's such a minute part of my life that that I don't even know, let alone feel something if somebody blocks me. Yeah. Um, it's because it, it's not the same as like kicking somebody out of your house. You know what I mean? Shoot, it's not even the same of hanging up. You know what I mean? It's not even the same of like I'm done with this call. Like it's literally. Yeah. It's it's so unimportant to me, um, but well, cause I don't even it, know. Yeah, uh, if, if you are the person who does a lot of unfriend, now now one, let me preface this also by saying, if you're a if you're a, a lady and you're getting a consistent amount of inappropriate pictures, like you block away. Like I get it, you know that that's a different kind of level. I, I can appreciate and respect. Or, that. Or, or or even if they're just making a bunch of comments on all your pictures that you don't like, then yeah, you know, yeah, you, you know, if somebody's being like legitimately inappropriate or or, or aggressive or, or threatening your safety or yeah block them go for it you know as a as a rather large man i don't really technically have to worry about that very often so my perspective is obviously skewed in that way um, yeah, i gotta admit if i was a female i'd, I'd probably block people bro. I, if i was a female i think i would and that's why i said it like because they have to deal with a whole lot of <laughs> simon i'm not gonna repeat that one but yes um uh, <laughs> yeah they have to deal with a, a lot different uh uh type of attention than I would have to right now. So I, I yeah. that's why I threw that in there. Like, and I'm not judging somebody for blocking or, or unfollowing and that kind of stuff. I, I just, uh, I would just be curious as to what is your, 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 your goal there, right? If your goal is to just not look at something, then okay, I get it. If your goal is to get back at them, they don't even know. It just feels, if, if it's not something completely vulgar and inappropriate, it just feels petty to me, I guess. Oh. It, and, and so that's why I don't do it. Well, how does Zuckerberg pick what I see anyway? You know what I mean? I mean, so yeah, like, algorithm. If we're not if we're not engaging in conversation, I mean, there's thousands of people on there. But every time yeah. I do it, the two minute scroll, I see the same five people yeah. anyway. So so clearly Zuckerberg chose who I see and who I don't see. So instead of blocking you, why don't you just spend no time looking at anything about that person? And wouldn't and they just disappear away. in thousands of obscurity anyway? Yeah, they'll just I mean, fade I'm away. Just, I, maybe, yeah, maybe I just don't understand the whole yeah, way it know. works. Well, and, and that takes me to my next one. Let's go ahead and do a, a, a stocking, right? Okay. So stocking would be, um, I've heard it done, you know, it, once again, I think it's a it's a double-edged sword here, right? On one hand, the mm-hmm. stocking part is, is, is um, useful, right? If you're trying to... Uh-huh. Uh, like let's say you're trying to do business with somebody and you're trying to get an idea for what they're about so you can kind of uh, you know help the situation along and, and, and find common yeah. interest or something totally understand yeah. it um it, you know if you're the way i could see it where it's not necessarily a good thing is is you know the inappropriate behavior somebody stalking you and and, and trying to find out where you live or find out where your kids go to school Ooh. you know Ooh. so those are because i've been told that before right like the, the the stalking word doesn't have the same meaning as it did 30 years ago, right? 30 years ago, stalking was, whoa, like, you know, dead rabbit head on my, on my porch type of thing. Um, but in, in today's world, it's like a joking, oh, I stalked you before I met you. And, and in that in that reference, what they mean is, I went and looked at your profile, I looked at all your pictures, I looked at what you're into, and I got an idea of who I think you are, right? 
And so in that sense, I think in an attempt to build connectivity, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but I, I do feel it can go too far, right? Uh, so I, I think the same thing is being mindful, right? Being mindful of, you know, are you becoming a little obsessive about this? Like, are you taking it a little too far? Uh, are you being inappropriate? Are you, you know, are you affecting the other person's daily life because you're stalking so much? Those are things I would say you just be mindful of. Right. Um, I think... Um... And this, maybe I'll, I'll save that for, for a little bit later in the discussion. Let me stick to the stocking there for a second. Um, I've got more. Yeah, if, if you want to go through my old pictures and old videos, have at it. I mean, I don't, you know, whatever. Um, again, I, I look at it like you, Trinity. It's, it's, it's entertainment. Um, you know, just because I may not do it doesn't mean other people. I it, apparently a lot of people do it. Actually, my daughter tells me everyone does, it. And, and I'm like, okay, I guess. Uh, but um, who cares? You know, now yeah. if you're doing it for creepy methods, creepy reasons, yeah, that's different. I mean, I even saw an account. I mean, didn't I show you one time that somebody did a, a fake Instagram account with my picture? And I thought that was weird. I think so. Um, yeah. That if you're gonna pick anybody, why are you picking an old, out of shape dude? <laughs> to do a fake, you know why? You know why didn't you pick like some eighteen-year-old girl picture, female picture, something like that? Yeah, why'd you know. pick it? Anyway, it didn't make any sense. But it, you know, uh, apparently, a lot of people go through uh, a lot of things. I, I don't. I just because I don't, I don't have an issue with it, with it though. I don't. I don't right. have an opinion. Yeah, same here. Uh, next one I have here. I'm gonna put the next two together. Uh, is relationships and joint accounts. This is an interesting one. Um, I remember there was a time not too long ago when people would ask, are you official or are you a Facebook official? And Facebook official then meant, did you change your status to in a relationship and then you tag them as that person, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So th that's interesting, right? Because I, I remember uh, when I was first dating uh, Angel, for instance, right? I didn't really post a whole lot. It was my private life. I was keeping it private. Uh, but... Uh, she made a comment at one point, just an inquiry, more like more, more likely, and that was, you know, are you are you trying to hide me, kind of a thing, because I wasn't posting a bunch about her. And I was like, no, I'm not trying to actively hide you. I just don't share certain aspects of my life. But I know that 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 is a thing, right? Some people feel that if you're not putting me out there for the world to see on a consistent basis, then maybe you're hiding me from those people. And what I'll say to that is maybe. You know, yeah. the, the, co contrary to what like Cosmo might tell you, th there is no bona fide, you know, universal truth. If this, then that. That doesn't exist. If somebody's not posting you on their social media, it doesn't inherently mean that no matter what, they're hiding you from people. Maybe, you know, I've heard multitude of reasons. Number one, maybe they're just a private person. Maybe they don't want to do it. Maybe they're afraid that it's going to curse them, right? Because that's the other <laughs> thing that that. When you put your relationship out there for the world to see, then everybody's got opinions and it makes your relationship harder to do. So it's easier to keep it private. You don't know the reason. So I would, I would hesitate to jump to the conclusion of, hey, if you don't put a picture of us in your profile picture, well, then you don't No, Have that conversation. Don't just jump to conclusions. And have the conversation yeah. with your spouse, not your girlfriends or your guy friends. Right? Yeah. Don't go talk to them. Hey, what do you think? This? No, 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 no. Talk to them specifically and, and, and take whatever answer they give you. Don't think that they're lying to you. Just take whatever answer they give you. And then the second half of that, the joint accounts, that is it, going to sound funny, but if I'm honest, the first thing that pops in my head, if I'm going through and I see a joint account between a, you know, like a husband and wife, for instance, the first thought in my head was who cheated. That's just the first thing that pops in my head was, okay, one of you guys cheated. That's because what I a, always think. Yeah, there's a massive distrust that's taking place. Somebody got in trouble. Yeah, and, and, and then, once again, that's not necessarily the truth, right? Maybe they just don't really use it very much and it's easier for them. I don't know. I'm just telling you the first thing my brain goes to, and, and maybe that says more about me, I guess, but the first thing that my brain goes to is, okay, somebody cheated, you know, and they're, the trust issues are there, so you're not allowed to have your own account. You, you know, you got to share it. Yeah, but to me, and, and it's, it's weird because I actually had an interaction with that years ago when I was first getting into Facebook. It was a long time ago. Uh, there was a girl that I went to school with that I graduated with. And this was in the very beginning of Facebook where you're basically just adding everybody you know. And, and matter of fact, Richard, you know <laughs> you know this person. Um, and I'm not going to say names for that very reason. But I went to school with this person, and they had a joint account. And so I added them as a friend. And then within like an hour, I immediately got a message 
and it was from the, the, the husband. And it was a very aggressive message. It was very wow. argumentative. Like, why are you asking her? I was like, whoa, bro. Like, hey, man, I, I just went to school. I was just adding people I went to school with. Like, relax. Um, you know, the dude was very aggressive. Uh, um, and so I, I, there's definitely trust issues, obviously, in that relationship that I wanted nothing to do with. But I think that yeah. that is part of the reason why that's where my mind goes, because I've experienced that. And so... Um, yeah, when I see joint really, joint uh, uh, social media accounts, I absolutely think that. And it's just awkward because, uh, you know, I, if I want to have a conversation with somebody, you know, I, I would reach out to you. If I didn't yeah. reach out to you, then it means I didn't want to talk to you right now. I wanted to talk to the other person. I, I never know who to say uh, happy birthday to when it's a joint account. I just say happy birthday. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, I don't think that they – I don't think someone cheated, but I do think that there are some trust issues related there. Of course. Or, or, um, you know, I, I definitely know some people with joint accounts, and I think it's also about the age. Like, I, I have a an old aunt and uncle on my my wife's side that have a joint yeah. account. I don't think that's for cheating purposes or anything. Yeah, I would that's agree just, with that. They're at an advanced age, and they have it so they can look at the kids' stuff and you know, yeah. you know, be in connectivity with their grandkids and all that stuff. I agree. But but younger people, it is it is kind of curious when you see it yeah, like that. It's of course. Kind of, I think all I think social media really is a relationship and has become part of the relationship in a lot of people's mm-hmm. lives. And I think, I think it's it's a it, it's a very indicative of a relationship as well. In other words, you have to go through a lot of the same things: trust issues, uh, balance, uh, communication. Uh, mm-hmm. Did you give a gift? Did you not give a gift? In other words, did you comment? Did you not comment? Did you say happy birthday? Did you not say happy birthday? Did you did you respond? Did you not respond? You know, it, it, it reciprocity. There's so many rules to the relationship of social media that I think for a lot of people, it's just overwhelming. Um, and, yeah. and they take on that stress as if they're in a relationship. I also see the same people that struggle in relationships struggle in the social media relationship, right. fighting with people, arguing with people, getting booted, getting canceled, getting you know, whatever. You know, right. uh, a lot of people will have suffer the same results. Um, I, I think the theme of uh, don't take. Seriously, it's going to keep coming up, keep coming yeah. up. And I think Richard Coleman's about what about joint checking accounts? I think uh, it's the flip side, right? I, 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 I like joint checking accounts. Uh, I think it's easier when someone passes away as well. And I, right. I don't agree with hiding money. I, we actually had a banker that actually said, uh, you know, the way she said what she said in front of my wife, it made it seem like, like, are you sure you want her included on this thing? And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. Yeah, I want her signing on all my accounts. What are you talking about? <laughs> Talk like that. Yeah, I would agree. With the, uh, the joint checking accounts. I would say that's an individual decision, right? Each marriage. I, think, I don't think whatever again, you choose. I don't. The idea that marriage looks a specific kind of way is just utter nonsense, right? And that's a that's a dangerous trap. And maybe we'll do another relationship series again, you know, updated one. But that's a dangerous you trap to get into. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a dangerous trap. Finance. Yeah. Uh, it's a dangerous trap to get into to start saying that it should look this way. No, like it's going to look however it looks. Each marriage is a, is individualistic as the people in it. You know, what works yeah. for one marriage couple might not work for another married couple. And trying to make everything fit this particular standard is a very dangerous thing to do. Um, but uh, but anyway, sticking to the, the, the relationship part, right? I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more uh, that are later on down the list. And that is, uh, the first one here is commenting only on the opposite sex and friending. So, in a relationship, right? So, that it's gotten so many people in trouble uh, of, of whose comments or pictures you like, which pictures you like, uh, who you accepted friends from, who you're, you're asking to be friends with. Um, th- th- those are all, they're all meaningful. Whether you intend for it to be or not, or whether it means something to you specifically or not, it might mean something to your spouse. It really would. Um, right. You know, and, and I've experienced that. Like, early on in, in our relationship, when her and I were talking, um, right. you know, same thing where you said it kind of boils over, right? If there's some trust issues or some insecurity issues, which there usually are, especially in, in new right. relationships or new marriages right. as you're right. learning one another, um, you might notice that, that your spouse might come up to you and ask you, hey, you know, why are you liking this or why are you liking that? You know, and that isn't – that doesn't say why much are you about friends? Their, yeah, that doesn't say necessarily as much about your their trust in you. It says more about their insecurities, and it's your job at that point to reassure them that that you know their feelings are valid and you're here for them. You know, it's not a personal attack against you. It's it's them saying I'm insecure right now in our relationship and I need you to validate it for me. That's really all that is. But um, 
because I actually had something like that. And she, Angel, one, the only time in all the years that we've been together, because the trust has never really been an issue for us when it comes to, uh, you know, infidelity and things. But there's only one time that she's ever asked me. It was some girl commented on one of my photos that I had no control over. And then in, in what I used to do, I don't do as much anymore because the numbers have gotten so big. Is anytime somebody would like one of my photos, like on Instagram, I would always try to go back and repay the favor, like a like for like type of thing. I felt obligated to like, okay, I'll like one of yours too, type of thing. Um, and I would always, and I was try if it was a female, I would always do my best to try to pick a picture that was uh, was not inappropriate, right? If, you know, if there's one of them holding their child and another one of them in a bikini, I'm liking them <laughs> with their holding their child. You know what I mean? Like I would try to be mindful of that, um, but. Uh, my wife took exception and she was asking me questions and I was like, are you serious? I mean, she's in Australia, bro. <laughs> like, I don't understand. You know, and we talked it out, of course, but that was the only time. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, but that was the only time ever that we've ever had any sort of discussion like that. And so my yeah. point is, in a relationship, don't underestimate the importance that social media might play in your relationship. Social media mm -hmm. itself might not be important to you, but the implications around it might be important to your spouse. So you might yeah. be using it as a tool and not care, but your spouse might have a moment of vulnerability and look at that and it might pu push a button inside of them that you need to address. And and, and, and that's kind of, um, you know, where I would leave that as far as liking other uh, comments. Like, you know, if you find, and even ask yourself, right? If you find yourself constantly liking one person's page or, you know, photos and things of that nature, ask yourself, like, why? You know, is this... Right. Why is it out of all the people I'm friends with, I always like this person? Is there something there that you need to investigate? You know, who, who Zuckerberg knows? puts it in front of you each time. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, well, no, I want to I want to say something on that because you mentioned bikini shots, guys. If you're in a relationship, never, ever, ever, yeah, never, like fix, never, ever. Just, 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 you know, I don't care who it is. Just be careful. I mean, I, I, I. I struggle with liking my own daughter's damn bikini pics, and you know, you know, what I'm, saying? I'm serious. I when, don't when, even when get me started, man. Posts, when Zoe posts, that, I'm like, but it's my baby. You know what I mean? So, I've seen pictures that Zoe has posted, and my first thought that yeah. goes to my head is, "Oh, Louis's not liking that one." Yeah, no, no, and I may even say something, you know, but yeah. but I, I again, I'd rather talk to her privately. I'm not going to say it there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, that's her decision. She's, a, she's now a grown woman, according to the law, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, but, uh, you know, it... yeah, I hear you. Um, so next one is, uh, let me, once again, we're going to try to blow through some of these, uh, the tagging pros and cons. We kind of already addressed this earlier and, and just be careful tagging somebody you know, without asking them ahead of time, just understand that they might not respond kindly to that. Maybe they didn't tell their friends and family. Maybe they called into work and you tagged them at a party. You know, who knows? Uh, just be mindful of when you're trying to tag. Get them, in but, trouble with that. Yeah, just be mindful of tagging other people. They they not they might not always view that as a as a good thing. Uh, the next one here is uh this, this is a Wait, big one. Why I don't get to say anything about it. Oh, I thought you just did. You said all right, go ahead. Well, then I've done it. Well, no, I'm going to say that I I've gotten in trouble. I, I actually well not trouble, but. Um, I have a uh, a relative that untags herself out of every picture I'll post her <laughs> for whatever reason. Doesn't want to be associated with you, man. You're uh, I don't use filters. I don't use filters. I don't edit the photo, and uh, I guess that's part of the deal. Whatever. Yeah, I've got I've got people in my life that I know uh, that are very adamant about all the filters, and they'll go and right. they'll recolor right. things, and I'm just right, like, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and I guess my point is don't get offended that they untag themselves out of your yeah. picture. I, yeah. I don't get offended. It's They, they, they can choose to, to represent themselves however they, they do. That's on sure. there. Um, so this next one, um, this next one is, is, is a kind of a complex thing. It doesn't sound like it, but I think it is. Uh, friend might not mean friend, right? Friend might not mean friend. What I mean by that is... I have you and I both have a, a pretty public profile, right? We have we're we're yeah. involved very much in a, a nonprofit, which with that everything is transparent and whatnot. And we have uh, we're taking in thousands of dollars of donations every year that people want to know who's in charge of that money, where it's going. So you know we are on somebody's radar, I'm sure. Um, and, and then of course with what we do here at our shows, we're gonna have a public persona, um, and so consequently. A result of that and something that drives that is the more friends we have. 
So the more popular yeah. we become, the more people who want to befriend us and follow us. Uh, and, and in order to get more eyeballs, we have to friend people and, and, and get requests. So um, what I'm getting at is on like on my LinkedIn, I've got I don't know over ten thousand I think. Um, on my uh, on my the ones I use most likely like Facebook, I have almost five thousand whatever. And so people yeah. will ask, oh well, he's your friend, and they they start saying something. I'm like, oh, oh time out. Yeah. I don't. I've never met this person in my life. I don't know who they are from Adam. It's just somebody who's on my my, my page. Um, and, and our situation, I think, is a little bit different than the average Joe working at, like, you know, Walmart or something. Like, it's in our best interest with what we do for a living and what we're trying to continue to do to have as many people as we can. And right. so, for us, it's a little bit different. Uh, um, but operate under the understanding of just because somebody's friends with you on Facebook does not mean that that person is your friend that's going to come to your birthday party and give you the shirt off their back. Like, it could just be... It's connection. That's how I look at it. You are connected to that person, and it might only be through Facebook. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I've been embarrassed by that several times, actually. Really? I'll be, I'll be, yeah, I'll be some other state or other city or whatever speaking, and I'll be introduced to somebody, and I'll introduce myself, and they go, "Oh yeah, we're friends on Facebook." <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I've had that. And I feel like an idiot. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Because they'll know something personal, you know, or say something that sounds right. relatively personal. Like, how do you know that? And they go, well, we're friends on Facebook. Yeah, you know? I've had that. Or they'll say times. something like, well, you know, it was my daughter's birthday last week. And I'll be like, <laughs> do I? And I, and I, I yeah. just feel like, wow, man, I, you know, you do know that Zuckerberg chooses to show me something different than he chooses yeah. to show you. Um, and, and so I, 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 I feel like I got to apologize sometimes. For all sure. that stuff, you know, because some people really, you know, take that seriously. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. So uh, moving Which on. Which I don't uh, mind being your friend out there. I'm just saying. That, yeah, I don't either. I, have well, I remember the first. Win. I have limited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember the first time that I was recognized. Uh, it was a weird feeling because I was sitting there minding my business doing something. We were getting ready to go into a preview. And uh, somebody just walked up out of nowhere. I go, oh, it's a Dharma guy. And I was just, what? Right. My first, I was like, how the hell? Do you? And then I forgot, like, oh, you probably follow us. Um, mm -hmm. uh, next one I have here, and we covered this in a, in a much older show, back when we were still in the studio, and that is mm -hmm. uh, uh, sliding in your DMs. Um, and, and I'm going to include in sliding in your DMs, instant messenger, because they're kind of one and the same. Uh, um, sliding, so for those of you who don't know, sliding in your DMs is a, is a euphemism for making an inappropriate pass in your direct messages. Um, it doesn't have to be an inappropriate message, but it oftentimes is. Uh, individual messages are, are interesting, right? Um, I understand the need for some of them, right? Like if I'm, if I got a business opportunity or if I'm trying to get somebody on the show or whatever, I might send them a, uh. A, a, a direct message because I'm not trying to put that particular request or that business out for the world to see. And the only way I have to contact him is uh, via direct message. Uh, but I do question sometimes what is it that you're saying direct message that you couldn't have said it publicly. And, and that's where the, the waters get kind of gray. Um, yeah. You know, you got to be careful about what it is that you're trying to, to ask these people and also understand that not everybody uses it the way you use it. Not everybody uses direct messenger. So you might send something and never hear back, and it's not because they're ignoring you. It's because they just didn't use it. Um, yeah. So you got to be – and not only that, but there, there's people out there too who get a, a preponderance of, of emails every day that might not even see it. I've seen people, and especially a lot of women, will show me their like their DMs, and they'll have like 700 unread ones. You know, or they'll have like a thousand friend requests just sitting there. I mean, you know, like they get bombarded, so it's hard to sift through that potentially. So – uh, going into the DMs is an interesting thing. I personally prefer to almost always do it right in front of everybody in the comment section so they understand that. Unless they choose to take it somewhere else. I was like, okay, you know, that's fine. Um, but that's just me personally. Um, I don't go there. Uh, I don't even use Facebook Messenger. It, people get upset with me because I don't respond to something. And Facebook Messenger is like, I, I, I don't like it. I don't like going there. Yeah. Um, you know, it... it Use my cell phone. Text me. You know, right. I'll give it to you. It's everywhere, man. I mean, you know what I mean? I'll give it to you. You can just text me and and, and all that. Um, only several times that people really – and, I, and you know, again, I'm not that young dude anymore. So uh, only several times have I gotten some uh, 
not so uh, good things like that. And thankfully, uh, thankfully, that's not something that, that, that gets done a lot. People know that I'm married. People know that I'm with family. Um, I do know that when things were inappropriate and some people did do something, even though I shared it with my wife, it'd be like, well, why did she think she could do that? Right. I was like, well, well, that's not, I'm not her therapist or psychologist. <laughs> so right. that's not my job to figure that out. It's irrelevant, right. baby. You know, people do what they do. And so I don't blame women uh, for getting certain picks from dudes. Um, and I don't blame dudes getting certain picks from women. Um, what I would say is that if it happens to you a lot, then that's when you reevaluate your whole friends list and what you're posting and seeing if you if it looks like you're throwing out chum. Because if you're chum in the water, then that's different, right? And what I call yep. chum in the water is if, if every couple pics of yours is you in a bikini or you being exposed, then, you know, you may be chum in the water. And, I, and, and I'm sorry that, that it's not safe for you to do that and, like, screw the world. It shouldn't be, like, judgmental like that, but, but it is. And, and and unfortunately, this is this is the reality in which we live in. Yeah, I agree. Um, and and then, uh, the next one I'll put with that one, now that I'm looking at it, is the FaceTiming. Because through Instant Messenger, you can also do a FaceTime call. Don't um, FaceTime it. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, my wife had one dude one time who did that, and she let me answer it. And he whipped out his genitalia and started using it. Uh, so you, you don't do that. Right, you saw that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I called him out, too. He didn't like it very much. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, I digress. FaceTiming on, on Instant Messenger, we're going to include that. Just don't do it unless you've got previous, uh, you know, a, a green light from that. Um, all right, the next two, I'm going to group together because we are kind of getting short on time. Uh, the next two, two I have here is selling and, and multi-level marketing. Okay. Um, uh, this is a two-part one for me, right? So I'll address the selling part first. If you have something to sell, if you have a business or if you have something you're into or a product and you're trying to put out there, hey man, Facebook is a tool, do your thing. But be mindful that uh, you could very well push away some of your potential customers yeah. if you yeah. are, if that's the only thing that you're doing. If, yeah. if I, I you, you know, if I'm scrolling down my feed and I see that you're selling, you know, whatever, every single day, 10 times a right. day. I gotta be honest with you. I'm not gonna judge you. I'm not gonna tell you, but but I'm going to probably ignore your post from now on, because I'm going right. to be trained to think if you posted anything, oh, it's you trying to sell me something again. I'm just gonna scroll right. right past it. Um, mm. and, and, and teach their own. Uh, so I'm not telling you not to sell your stuff, but if you want to, there's places that are that are geared towards that, right? Like Etsy or what have you, or eBay. There's a marketplace on Facebook. Uh, but if you choose to not utilize those services, just be mindful of the fact that you could be alienating some of your friends and family who just don't want to be bombarded with a sales pitch every single time they go on to their social media. Um, the uh, well, let's address that one first, and then I'll get into the MLM thing. I, I don't mind. I don't mind people's personal hustle, man. Do do what yeah, you do. Yeah, I don't but, either. Uh, but uh, you know, I know that you've learned to handle objections as well, or you're learning how to handle objections. Uh, just know that, you know, that after a certain amount of objections, take it for truth. It's an objection. Um, you know, on the other hand, I I've been guilty of it myself. You know, I got excited about something I was doing. It was going really well. I was doing it out of country. Um, and I knew that, you know, I was in my twenties or very early thirties. Um, and I didn't think that stuff would work, and it worked for me, and it actually did really well. Uh, and I was getting paid on that for like 10 years. Uh, I actually got upset when it, the check stopped coming in, and, and I don't even know why they stopped coming in. Um, but They're they did. They're piling up somewhere right now. Yeah, they probably are. But uh, Well, I know they still owe me some I know that there's an account, but I'd have to do some things. And I was like, whatever. Sure. But it was like 10 years, you know, 10 years of uh, uh, mailbox money. So that was pretty cool. So I don't, I don't mind your hustle. Because that stuff actually does work, but but I just may not be interested in it. So just take my objection. You know, if I object, I object. I'm done with that kind of stuff. I'm not in those ages anymore. I'm not interested anymore. But in my early 20s or mid mid to late 20s up to early 30s, I enjoyed all your guys' ideas because it was fun. It was it was fun to do. Yeah. So with the selling selling of something, if you got a business, like I, I I'm all for it, man. Put it out there. I mean, I do it. You know, so I get it. Um, no. but I personally, I try to mix it up right between promoting what we're doing and like maybe showing, you know, that my daughter's on the honor roll or something. I try to mix it up. 
I don't try to have an mm-hmm. only, hey, everybody, click on my YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Because I realize people get kind of tired of hearing it. It's tiresome. You know, it's like, okay, I get it, bro. You're doing that, you know. Um, but the multi-level marketing thing, oh, man. Um, Do you get a lot of it or something? Yes, dude. I get so many all the time. Um, and, and so, I, I, you know, my perspective on this is probably slightly different than others. So I agree with you. I get it, man. If you want to join an MLM, hey, bro, just yo, handle your business. Do your thing, man. I get it. Good for you for trying. Um, uh, I, I tried them years ago, same as you, when I was younger. You know, I, I had rose-colored glasses. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to be a millionaire. You know, I, you know I, I got into it. And then I started realizing some of the truths that are associated with the MLM. And I'm not going to get into them because I'm not trying to offend anybody or piss anybody off. But I got into what I felt to be the truths of it. And I just was no longer interested. And then I kind of moved on with my life, went on, and I did other things. But uh, the objections. People don't take them well sometimes. Um, I've had so many people very, uh, in a shady way, reach out to me and offer me like a job or something or say, hey, man, you have time. Let's, I, you know, I just want to meet you or do whatever. Let's have a lunch, you know. And early on... I was like, oh, okay, sure. You know, I was trying to build the business. I right. to find out that that whole meeting was for them to try to get me to the MLM. I was just like, dude, are you serious? Like, I didn't want it. Like, if you would have notified me this ahead of time, I could have told you no and saved us both the hassle. Like, I'm just not interested. And nothing you're going to say is going to change my mind. So just stop. And that's the other thing is when I start to tell people I'm not interested, they just keep arguing with you and trying to tell you what it is. And they try to address all your concerns. And I get the salesmanship. I do. Objections, bro, man. I've told you I'm good. They like, don't turn this into me being rude now. Like I've told you multiple times. Um, so what I would say about MLMs, if that's what you're into, I get it. But be mindful yet again. You know, be mindful that that not everybody is going to have the same excitement or joy or belief that you do in said product or said business, and that's okay. Yeah. They're allowed yeah. to not uh, look at all the different car companies. Not everybody right. drives a Toyota. You know what I mean? Some people are just diehard Ford. Some people, it's okay. You know, your product is not the only one. And I understand you've got a vested interest in that product. And that's part of the problem is now you're taking it in a personal level. It's no longer just business. Now you're like trying to call in on your personal friends and say, Hey, look, you know, be, to be a friend of mine, buy this stuff, you know, and that's dangerous waters. And so, uh, uh, just be mindful of that, man. And, and the reason why I have invested, because I get at least five or six hits, especially with the uh, uh, the business of, of health and fitness. Everybody with health and fitness, anything related, Herbalife, all those, they all just hit me up constantly because they think I'm going to funnel it through. And, and I'm just never going to do that. Um, so what I would say about the multi-level marketing companies is, first of all, if you're the recipient and you're not interested, don't take it personal. They're trying to hustle. Part of when you sign up, they tell you is write down a list of your friends and family because yeah. your first customers. Yeah. So it's not a yeah. personal attack against you. They're just they're just hustling, man. They're 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 fired up and excited about an idea, and they're Absolutely. believing that the, the 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 gold is at the end of the rainbow, and they're gonna chase it, you know. But at the, on the other side of that, also understand that maybe your friend just isn't interested. You know, maybe your friend just doesn't want to do that. You know, multi-level marketing companies are not a new thing. So if they're not in one, there's a very good chance that they're just not interested. It's not that they never heard about them and they don't know they exist. No, they know. They just choose to not want to be a yeah. part of it. And yeah. so understand that if you reach out to them, just learn to take no for an answer sometimes. I, I get the sales thing of not taking no for an answer. And that's great if it's a cold call. But if it's a personal friend, take no for an answer sometimes. Yeah, I, it's 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 a two-way thing here, man. For those of you, just like you said, you know, take take your nose and move on. Um, I think uh, with your close personal friends, I think it's almost better that uh, if you can ask them, hey, man, I know you're not interested in multi-level marketing, but here's the product. I think the product's good. If, if, if you could just be my customer, it, that'd be great. But it, also, if not, that's fine as well. And I think if more people took that approach, they would have a lot more customers and make a lot more money on their multi-level marketing. I had one friend that uh, I never, he never pitched me the business deal. I, of course, I know there's a business deal behind it. But I stayed his customer for like five years, man. Why? Because right. I liked the product he was selling. So so who cares? You know, right. use me as, because you need customers and you need other MLMers. You know what yeah. I mean? But so, so take me as a customer. Um, so so maybe you should learn from that. Just let someone be a, a dedicated customer. And then uh, if they ever want to know more, like if they're if they're around you and they see, you're upgrading your house and you're upgrading your cars and you're upgrading your lifestyle, they're going to ask you, uh, you know, Hey, 
You know what I mean? Don't worry about it, but just uh, take the customers. And for those of you that, that, that get annoyed by your friends, look, if your friend had a restaurant, you'd go eat at the restaurant. If they had a bar, you'd go drink at their bar. So this is their business. Um, you know, treat, you know, respect it as their business. And so if you have the guts enough to, to say, I don't mind looking at your product if you just treat me like a customer. You know, but I don't want to be. I don't want to be in the business. But if I if I just want to look at it, I don't want to go to a meeting. I don't want to go there Monday night. I don't want to. You know, I know. But, 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 but don't trick me into a meeting or anything like that. You don't need to introduce me to anybody thinking, you know, that that person says, well, hey, just introduce me to him. I'll do it for you. No. But you know, you can't ask to be a straight up customer. There's a, a lot of great products are sold through 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 MLM industry, and I think it they'd sell more if if people would just be okay with just buying products or just selling products. Um, because I'm a consumer anyway, I'm going to consume right. stuff anyway. Um, so if it's something I'm already consuming, then maybe, but if it's more expensive or it comes with annoyance, no, I like, I like the silence of a Walmart or Publix, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, a, a lot more. And, or and, and Amazon. Full disclosure, none of this, none of this, uh, applies to our friends. Cause if you're our friends, you need to immediately like, share and follow everything that we do. Just going <laughs> to... <laughs> Uh, oh, and you didn't right, know so, this is an MLM service, so we have the couch yeah, there, right. everything, our time underneath it. Everything else. That's right. Like... <laughs> uh, so the, the last one I have here that I'm gonna I'm gonna comment on, and then we'll we'll wrap it up, uh, is reporting. Okay. So reporting, uh, um, I uh, I see a lot of stuff that I would say is questionable, you know, as far as uh, uh, its value, um, but that's to me, and so I typically, if I don't like it, if I don't find it value. In it, I, I will typically just ignore it, move on with my day, and keep scrolling. Um, I only time I've ever reported uh, is if somebody has tagged me in, like, uh, like if it was a spam account that had tagged me in, like a, because I get tagged a lot and stuff. Like, uh, like uh, just yesterday, I got tagged in some thing that as soon as I clicked on who tagged me in this, it was like mature eighteen plus. I was like, okay, like I meet mean, those ones every single time without fail. I report, block, do whatever because it's a spam account, right? But I have never, and I don't know if I will ever, uh, report somebody who posted a photo I didn't like. Unless, of course, it was like abusing a child or a dog or some something, something crazy like that uh, that they were doing, right? Because I've even seen the ones where people shared a video of somebody doing something horrible in another country. And I don't really want to watch it. I, I find it distasteful. But I just scroll past it. Because it's just not, I'm not trying to monitor your feed and what you think your people want to see. And so I typically refrain from reporting anybody's content personally. Um, to each their own. Uh, I just I, I I would question the motives of reporting. Like you know, it's not your page, it's not your thing. Uh, you do have the ability to unfriend and unfollow if they're consistently putting yeah. stuff up there that you don't like. I don't know if it's necessarily my place to 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 dictate to somebody else what they could or couldn't post. As long as Facebook doesn't have a problem. I mean, if, if their algorithms aren't catching it, then who would be far be it for me to monitor their platform? That's what Facebook gets paid to do. I don't get paid to be a moderator. That's not my job. So I moderate myself. So if I'm scrolling and I don't like, I have one person that in my life on Facebook that I can think of at the moment that I unfollowed. I'm still friends with them because I think it's a cool person, but they were consistently posting very divisive uh, racial things. And they were constantly, just every post was just a hatred-filled, anti-this, anti-that. And I disagreed vehemently with everything that this person was saying. But I'm not going to get involved in that dialogue on Facebook. It's just not going to happen. And I didn't want to unfriend the person because I've known them for a long time. You know, I, I, you know, I'm okay. I'm cool with them. I wouldn't consider them a great friend. Um, but I don't report. I don't do anything. I just, I unfollow. Meaning when they post stuff, I just don't really see it anymore. Um, so that to me is my, my, my viewpoint on reporting. What are your thoughts? Um, I think I've only reported twice in my entire career on social media. The one was when they used my picture and uh, as a profile. And the second was, it was a, 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 a it looked to me uh, pornographic on children. I don't know if it was because I didn't click it. Uh, but the, uh, the initial picture they were using uh suggested something that i just was like and it was uh it's way early on actually it's way early on when my kids were still young and right. because i have daughters I, I i it bothered me a lot sure uh 
Now, since then, I haven't had any of those experiences, and and uh, I don't even report the stupid things. I I would report it if if it got done to me. What happened to you? You said you got tagged in something pornographic. I would report that, or I would unblock it. Or yeah, I get it. tagged all the time. Okay. Yeah, that 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 I would. Um, but since it doesn't happen, I don't have to worry about. It. But I agree with you. That's where I would do it. It, it. But blocking a person, I've heard of people blocking or unfollowing or or uh, or uh, what do you call it? reporting a person? Why would you report a real person? Just don't yeah. look at it. Who cares? You know, um, right. makes no sense. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and it, right, and it usually you only know it when someone makes a comment like they'll, they'll, they'll post it. This is my new account because apparently I can't show my wah wah wah, and I like. Yeah. I didn't even know you showed your wah wah wah. I missed that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, so let's wrap up. Not just today's show, but let's wrap up communication as a whole, since this is our our fifth and final episode of the communication series. So, any any final words you got to say about the whole thing? Uh, before the whole thing, though, I have that. Um, yeah, you put me on the ice up. Um, I don't like to be told what to post. By the way, this is to my family members that that aren't on social media. If you want a certain thing posted, you should get on social media. Don't tell me what to post. That bothers me more than anything. I'm not on social media for a certain objective other than whatever I want to do, however I feel. Um, there's been many events and many good pics that I have not posted simply because the time passes, I got busy, I got distracted, and just never did it. Um, it doesn't mean that I think less of you. It doesn't mean that I didn't respect you. It doesn't mean that I didn't want to tell the world about you. It has nothing to do with anything that's in your head. I just, you know, uh, you feel free to post whatever you want. I won't object to it. And you want to tag me, tag me. Even if I have a funny face, I have nothing to hide. I don't care. Um, to everybody about, uh, and this applies to not just social media, but everything. If you see something, hear something, get a text to something, get a phone call or something, and you object to it. Um, I can pop off really quick. Uh, you know, one of uh, my best teachers in life was a secretary. She would tell me, when you're that mad, Louie, hold, let me read the email. Don't send it, blah, blah, blah. And I would hold. And then I would realize that later on, after I calmed down, she was right. I shouldn't send it. Same thing applies for social media, texting, calling, anything like that. If you're like me and you get really emotional and frustrated and you just want to punch somebody in the face, uh, maybe you just should hold a moment. Don't don't post it. Don't, don't say it. You don't need to. Um, now, if tomorrow you feel the same way, maybe you need to. I don't know. Talk to somebody else about it first. But uh, those, those are the only things that I'm, I'm thinking about. As far as wrapping up in communication, I think it was awesome to do this whole thing. I can't possibly remember all five shows right now. So if you have any interest, go back and review some of the other shows. I think we shared a lot. I, I, you know, I want to thank all the people that watched it on Facebook Live uh, that were able to contribute their thoughts. You know, Richard, Simon, uh, Marissa, uh, Ellie, uh, just to name a few. I think they all contributed at some point in time of what we were talking about. I thought that was really cool. But that's it. Right on. Yeah, I would concur with that that last little bit there, man. I'm very appreciative, um, you know, of the people who who've decided to chime in and give their thoughts. You know, uh, it does add more value to the show, obviously. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, any of the previous shows, if you guys want to see them once again, you can go on any major podcasting platform and hear them. If you want to see them, you can go to YouTube.com/slash Dharma Time, and you can catch up on all the older ones. So this does conclude the five part series on communication. Once again, the first one was. Uh, texting, second one was emailing, the third one was phone calls, the fourth one was in-person meeting, and then this final one is uh, social media. So to wrap them up as a whole, you, you know, instead of doing my three tips, I'm just going to leave you with some thoughts. And the thoughts would be, understand that you, you know communication is a great thing. It is really the bedrock of how we all get anything done, is we have to communicate our desires, our goals with those around us. Uh, we have to be able to listen to what somebody else is communicating to us as well. But within that communication, understand what's said and what's heard oftentimes are different. And that's not because of they view you differently necessarily. It's different cultures. It's different perspectives. It's different mindsets. It's different goals. And, and, and you're not always going to speak the exact same language as the person that you're trying to interact with. And I don't mean actual like Spanish, English language. I'm talking about just the overall goal type language and expectations and so if you don't be mindful of of all those nuances and the ways that you're communicating and how you're getting your point across um it's going to affect your inner peace 
And that to me is the biggest part of spirituality is our inner peace. And that's why we practice it. That's why you're listening to the shows because you're trying to either get or maintain your inner peace somehow, somewhere. And, and so understanding the way you communicate and how effectively you do that uh, and how effectively you listen and can hear what the person is trying to tell you goes a long way in maintaining or obtaining your inner peace. That is part of spiritual practice. Um, and, and that's showing compassion to yourself and those around you. You know, the whole list. I can go through them all, but you already know that. So um, so that's my final thoughts on communication. And don't be afraid of it. Don't run away from it. Don't shy from it. But uh, instead, educate yourself and understand the nuances and be mindful of those every time you try to communicate. And, and be aware that you might not necessarily be coming across the way you desire to come across. And, you know, we all, in our heads, it makes perfect sense, man. In our heads, like, this is how it is. But when you put it out, it might not be heard the same way. And so instead of being defensive or angry, just understand that there's certain nuances and then that person might not have heard what it is that you just said and vice versa. You might not be hearing what they're saying. So anyways, that's all I got. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, and until next time, now that you know better, do better. Peace. <laughs>